On January 18, 1958, Willie O'Ree skated onto the floor for the Boston Bruins in Montreal, becoming the first black player in NHL history. And if that wasn't enough of a barrier to overcome, O'Ree was also blind in his right eye, a fact that he didn't reveal until after his hockey career was over. He would play two games for the Bruins in 1958 and 43 more in 1960 and 61. It would be 13 years after that before another black player took the ice for an NHL team. Over the last 23 years, O'Ree has worked to grow the sport of hockey across the country by serving on the league's diversity task force. He was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2018. So you actually born in Canada, came up as a baseball player, could have played any number of sports, passion for hockey. When did it first occur to you that you, you wanted to play in the NHL and realized what the challenges were that lay ahead? Well, um, when I was 14, I, uh, I made uh, two goals for myself to be a professional hockey player and hopefully one day play in the National Hockey League. Um, I have to give a lot of credit to my older brother, who was not only my brother, but my mentor, taught me a lot uh, that I need to know about the game. Uh, left my hometown at 17, went up to Quebec and played my first year junior. Uh, the second year I played in Kitchener, Ontario under the uh, Montreal Canadian organization. And uh, that's when I had my unfortunate accident. You know, none of the players back then wore any helmets, no face shield, no, no cages. And uh, there was a slap shot, uh, I'm in front of the net, puck come up and struck me in the right eye. I lost 97% vision in my right eye. And doctor told me I'd never play hockey again, but that just fueled me to uh, just to keep playing and, and work harder. And uh, two years later, I uh, broke into the National Hockey League. So if 200% is full vision, you have like 103%, right? <laughs> and it's like you're looking back and you're thinking, what's wrong with these people? Why can't they play? I had half the physical skills and I succeeded. Yeah, well, you know, uh, being a left-hand shot and playing yeah. left wing, right. I had to turn my head all the way around to the right to pick the puck up and the play up, and I was over skating the puck and missing the net. But I just said, Willie, forget about what you can't see and concentrate on what you can see. You see Jackie Robinson break in, and you're, you're a great player, not just a, a black player. When did it first... Uh, cross your mind that you might want to do the same thing in the NHL? Well, I think when I, uh, when I, when I played my, uh, my first year pro up in Quebec under the leadership of, <clears throat> of Punch Emlac, okay. and Punch said, Willie, he says, you have the skills and the ability to play in the NHL. He says, there hasn't been a black player. Uh, and he says, you could be the first. And I, uh, I, I took the tone to that. And I said, you know, and I just worked, played, uh, played with the, uh, uh, the Aces that first year, went to the Bruins training camp the next two years, and then uh, broke in on uh, January the 18th, 1958, broke uh, in with the Bruins. I, I was just going to talk about that date. I assume you remember that date very vividly. Yes. What was it like skating on that, uh, on that ice and well, realizing the history of it and that you were yeah. involved in it? I was no stranger to the Montreal fans yeah. because I had played against the Montreal Junior Canadians in, in the Forum, the Montreal Royals, the pro team I played in the Forum. But when I stepped on the ice on January the 18th, 1958, it was just, I was just overwhelmed that I was going to play a regular scheduled NHL game against the top team, the Montreal Canadiens, who had been winning the Stanley Cup. There were some other good black players around at that time, but when they called me up, uh, I was very, I was very thankful that uh, the Bruins saw enough of me to bring me up and, and um, you know, and play with them. We were all at the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Uh, you went in with Gary Bettman. Yes. Gary Bettman's speech moved me significantly. Yours moved me to tears. Well, it, it was incredible. It moved a Describe lot. It, it moved a lot. Of, it moved a lot of people. Uh, you know, I just, uh, I have to thank so many people that, uh, that voted for me and um, I just wanted to let them know that uh, I was very, very thankful for the, you know, for the vote that I got and uh, because I really didn't uh, know I was going into the hall for about the last four weeks. They said there was a possibility. They said if you get a phone call, uh, you'll be going in. If you don't get a phone call, you won't be going Oh, you in. knew. Yeah, I mean, you didn't know. But I had yeah, an idea. Yeah, you did. I had an idea. Obviously, you're an ambassador with the NHL. STEM, tech, training, it hits a lot of buttons, especially with the NHL and NHL Players Association. It so cer it talk about done. the future of this as well. Well, well I'll tell you, it, uh, there is a lot of future. Uh, there's, more, there's more kids playing hockey today than ever before. There are more girls playing hockey than ever before. They've made, uh, <clears throat> they've made it uh, possible for these kids to come out and play and they can they can choose their sport if they choose hockey baseball football basketball whatever but you have to set your mind and you have to you have to set goals for yourselves and work towards your goals god bless willie o'ree uh you got your bruins you got your patriots you got your red Sox. i'd take this man anywhere if i'm in boston <laughs>